vigilante, a member of a self-appointed group of citizens who undertake law enforcement in their community without legal authority, typically because the legal agencies are thought to be inadequate. If you asked me 10 years ago what vigilante justice was, I probably would have cited the legend of Robin Hood, a heroic outlaw in English folklore who, alongside a band of merry men, would steal from the rich to give to the poor, operating within Nottingham and hiding in the shadows of Sherwood Forest. The earliest iteration of his tale came in the form of poetry in the 1370s. The concept of vigilanteism can be observed existing even earlier, such as the biblical account in Genesis 34, when Simeon and Levi slew all of the men within the city of Shechem in retaliation for the abduction and violation of their sister Dina. It's an old practice that can be seen occurring throughout the ages on even larger scales, such as the lynchings of African Americans during the 20th century. A more specific type of vigilanteism has arisen in more recent years of P-word hunters. This is likely due to changes in societal perspectives on children due to advancement in science. For centuries, children were simply considered to be smaller adults, and the concept of being a teenager didn't really exist until the 1920s in America. Prior to the emergence of teenagers, it was believed that there was no middle stage between being a child and being an adult, and children were considered to be grown much earlier on than we do now, likely due to humans having a much shorter life expectancy. Which is why four-year-olds were shoved up chimneys to clean and put to work in factories in Victorian England, as the average life expectancy was 40 for men and 42 for women. It wasn't until 1842 that children under 10 were banned from working in mines. Since then, the average life expectancy in the United Kingdom has almost doubled to 81 years old, thanks to science and robots doing a lot of the more dangerous tasks. Other advancements discovered human development is a bit more complex than simply growing physically and learning basic life skills. Development is emotional, intellectual, cognitive, psychological, and these advancements had been progressing since human history began. Medieval England in 1066 to 1485, ending 352 years before the Victorian era began, had the population marry aged 12 for women and aged 14 for men on average. Because the average life expectancy was only 31 years old between 1276 and 1300. In comparison, in Victorian England, the average age of a woman to marry was 24 and a man was 25. And so, with longer lifespans and a progression in science that allowed us to understand developmental stages, society evolved and understood children and adolescents are vulnerable. Ergo, we no longer shove four-year-olds up chimneys because it's looking a bit dusty up there. Laws such as the age of consent were laid down to reflect these findings and the new societal consensus. Before, children weren't seen as a group that needed protection, but sociological and legal changes switched, explaining the increase in hatred for those who commit offences against children. For first world countries, the majority of us aren't looking at 12 year olds suspiciously when they're not married because they're no longer considered to be middle aged at 12. Just a side note how weird that is, in medieval England at the age of 25, I've got five good years left of my life and I'm unmarried, so I would be a spinster. Thank God for science. In regards to offences against children, laws in many countries are deemed to be inadequate or police simply don't have the resources to catch the perpetrators, thus many take it into their own hands either performing citizen arrests or assaulting alleged p-words. Social media has added to this phenomenon, allowing people to film and post videos of these encounters or livestream them. Some do this purely to publicly humiliate, punish and expose p-words. Others do it for monetary gain, and others claim they wish to protect children. But the manner in which some of these individuals and groups conduct these confrontations do the exact opposite. Using my two years worth of law study in a degree that I no longer use, I'll be going over how you should ethically and legally conduct these confrontations. However, I do not recommend doing this. I am absolutely not liable for anything anyone does who watches this video. 
I'm just tired of watching these confrontations play out and in almost every single one I see it being done wrong which can cause more harm than good. The first stage is initial contact. Many of these individuals and groups will set up fake profiles online. For example, setting up a Facebook profile and putting the age as a 14 year old child. The most obvious thing is, do not use real minors to communicate with anybody who may talk to them on that profile or send any content from a real child. I haven't seen a group or individual do this as of yet, but I'm really sure it's probably happened at some point. In most cases, the individual or group of people will talk to the P word themselves or have a team of decoys pretending to be the child. The first reason that this is, is because of ethics. You could be placing a child in danger or exposing them to something that they shouldn't be seeing. The second is legal. Depending on your country or state, you could be done for owning slash distributing CP or conspiracy to have adult digital communication with a minor. You could be as equally culpable as the P word, no matter what your intentions were. The second part of this is do not be the first one to make contact. You have to allow the P word to make contact with that profile of the child first. You also must not be the first one to suggest talking about adult content, whether that be images or via text. You must also not be the first one to suggest meeting up. This is all because of the legal defense of entrapment. If you, as the minor, are the one suggesting all of these things, they can claim a defense of entrapment, that they were being coerced into committing a criminal act. And the third thing, state the age of the profile or the minor that you are pretending to be as soon as humanly possible. Anything adults said before explicitly stating the age can be thrown out as they can claim they believed you were of age during that part of the conversation. Everything that is said in these conversations should be documented from the very first message to the very last message. I would highly recommend having all of this organized into a file so you can hand it into the police when you reach the next part, the confrontation. The first thing that you should do even before you approach the P word is call the police and do not let them leave the scene. I will explain this later on. There's a debate going on between live streaming these encounters or simply filming it. Live stream is controversial because number one, it can't be edited. So anybody who happens to be innocent that is in that space could be shown on the screen and could be targeted even if they had nothing to do with it. And also, it's already out there, it's a live stream and therefore it can interfere with the case. Whereas with videos, you can edit out people's faces who were innocent and you can release that video to the public once the court case has gone through. On the other hand, live streaming is very interesting because you can catch anything that that P word says then there in the moment and they may let a few things slip. No matter how you choose to do it, one thing remains constant. You must remain calm and you must not cause a scene. It's best to take them to the side out of the way. This is because they can claim that they were under duress or intimidation, meaning anything that they do say in the video or live stream is inadmissible in court. Even if you manage to get a full confession out of this person to numerous crimes, if you were shouting at them or being really aggressive during, it might not even matter. This is where not letting them go becomes important. As soon as you've taken them to the side, if you are able to, perform a citizen's arrest. In the United Kingdom, this is section 24A of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984. They are legally unable to leave the sea till the police arrive. If you let them go and they are targeted by other people, you can be done for facilitating harassment. If they leave and they hurt or unalive themselves, you can be liable for manslaughter. You can also go home and destroy evidence. If you don't conduct a citizen's arrest and call the police, it isn't considered evidence tampering as they weren't under arrest, meaning that if they are talking to real children, they can get away with it. This is why it's so important to call the police. Don't just randomly confront them, yell at them for a bit, and then offer them a card for psychiatric help as I've seen a few people do. No, call the police. As mentioned before, do not harm them or shout at them or allow them to be harmed. 
Duty of care isn't a legal obligation, but you will have documented yourself committing assault or harassing somebody when you film these encounters, so you've kind of incriminated yourself, and you could also be held liable for facilitating assault if somebody else harms them while you're there. Your job is literally to keep them there until the police arrive, without incriminating yourself or making yourself liable for anything else that could be a defense for them. And if you've done what I've recommended by printing off all of the receipts into a file, once they do arrive, you can hand that directly to the police. If it is a video encounter, I would strongly recommend holding off posting it so it doesn't interfere with legal proceedings. There are a few good practices that I've seen that I would definitely recommend doing, although it's not a legal obligation. I would definitely recommend safeguarding the decoys, the people who have to talk to these P words on a daily basis either provide counselling services or make them aware of counselling services that they can use if they need to. It is a highly mentally taxing job and they definitely should have an outlet for all of their feelings about it. Another really good practice that I've seen is aftercare for family members or friends of the p-word, especially if the encounter happens at their own home. Taking innocent parties to the side off camera and explaining to them the situation as well as making them aware of support services that are available for them. These could be husbands, wives, sons, daughters that had absolutely no idea what their loved one was doing. It's going to be a massive shock to them. One of the most heartbreaking thing about these stings, particularly when they occur at the address of the P word, is sometimes you can hear their spouse crying in the background because they've just been told what their husband or wife has been doing. They could have been married for 10, 20, 30, 40 or more years and they've just been told what kind of person that they've been married to this entire time. They're overcome with so many emotions, sadness, anger, guilt. They're thinking about their children and their grandchildren, what might have happened to them. So while it's entertainment for a lot of people and it's enjoyable to see a P word finally get caught, there's the other side of the coin of the innocent family members who had no idea and now are scared for their own children and grandchildren and worried, has something happened to them? Have they done something to them? It's really important to note that it's not just the P word that's going to be affected, it's the entire family. A really good example of an ethical P word catcher is Mike Fox. I definitely recommend checking his channel out. He also reacts to other stings and tells them what they could do next time to make it better, both legally and ethically. The sad part about a lot of these sting channels that I see coming up is that there is very little regard for those who will be severely affected. Any real children that these P words could have been talking to, any of the family members who may be implicated even though they did nothing wrong. It's more of a quick gotcha video and then they're out. Some of these people are doing four, five, six stings a day when really it should take a lot of time. You should be consulting with lawyers, solicitors, making sure everything is perfectly legal in order to make sure that the person doing this gets time behind bars. Vigilante justice nowadays, especially when it comes to p-word hunters, is more about the clicks, views and comments than it is the actual justice. And if anybody who does these things sees this video, please abide by what I have said, especially if you are from the UK, because a lot of the laws that I have cited and some of the defences that I have cited are used within United Kingdom courts. It may differ based on your country or state, but generally these are the legal guidelines that you should go by if you actually want justice to be done. I hope this video was informative and slightly entertaining. I wanted to talk about the rise in vigilante content specifically to do with P-words and how some of the ways that these sting groups go about their job really harms the cause in the long run. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.